Hey guys, what's going on? This is Luke Ganyon here. Um, I want to show you the, my modern Affinity deck. Uh, so if you don't know anything about Affinity, Affinity is awesome. When it first came out back in the day, it was the most powerful deck. Nothing could even come close to it. Uh, you know, just so powerful. Everything is so cheap in the game. You know, it's such a cheap deck to make. And it's also a cheap uh, mana cost on everything. You can play so many things. You can kill people on turn two. You can kill people on turn three. It's so ridiculous. If everything goes perfect for you. I'm going to look at the uh, the main cards, the four cards you see on this page right now. These are the ones I'm going to talk about. The rest of them, why don't you just like look them up on Google or whatever, or another episode. I will explain them a little bit better. An Arcbound Ravager, sacrifice a creature, put a 1-1 one, one counter on Arcbound Ravager, or sacrifice an artifact, sorry. That's huge. You can like make this guy really big, and he is modular, which means when he dies, you can put those 1-1 one, one counters on somebody else. So you can sack himself to himself. That is possible. And then you could also put 1-1 one, one counters on other things. So that's ridiculous. You put those 1-1 one, one counters, you can put them on your guy, uh, get some really big everything like that, um, win the game with that. You can. One time I sacked all the counters to uh, Ink Mock Nexus, so he had all the counters on him. So he was like a 7-2 or 7-1 or something. Oh, no, he was like a 7-7, seven, seven. yeah. And then at the end of turn, he doesn't turn into a creature anymore, so on during his turn, he had nothing he could do. Like, he played like Wrath of God or something, and it would destroy everything and all the creatures in play, but he wasn't a creature at that time. He still has the counters on him, so next turn, he becomes a creature again. He still has the counters on him. He's a 7-7, seven, seven, you know, in fact, boom, he's dead. Like, that's huge. And then, uh, then Cradial Plating is huge, too. Uh, Cryptic Creature gets 1 plus 0 for each artifact you control. So good. Um, plus you can play the two black which doesn't happen very often but you can you can do it at like instant speed and then also equip, uh, equip for one you can equip them on there so if you have like say nine artifacts in play your uh, little 1-1 one, one guy just turned into a 10-1 that's not bad you know um, next card Arreo this is a very popular card um, this guy has a very powerful ability 1-1 one, one for 1-1 uh, one, one for 2 so far, you're like, that's not that bad. Flying, okay, getting a little better. Whenever the, you play a four spell on this turn, flip him. Okay, what does flipping him do? So, flipping him, when you turn him over, he turns into a legendary enchantment, which counters the first spell played by each opponent each turn. Crazy. So, this shuts down counter decks. This shuts down, uh, you know, removal decks. So powerful. You know, it when you get that off, I've got it off on turn one before, and the guy just gave up. Like, every spell that he plays, he wants to play a creature to kind of, like, help himself or something like that. Most of the time, turns one through four, you're only going to be playing one spell anyways, unless you play a deck like mine. Because this, this deck, you can play a crap load of spells very early. So most decks are only, especially control decks, are only going to be playing one spell per turn from one through four. So... <laughs> that array just really eliminates your first turn f four turns essentially and and guess what this deck wins in four turns so that just like makes me win the game literally it's ridiculous um and then we got flame over there an additional cost to play flame sacrifice a creature deal damage equal to the creature's uh power to uh to, to a creature, to another creature or a player, so that's huge too. Only cost two. You can do it on a guy that has cranial planing on him and arcbound ravager modulars. So this guy could be like a fourteen seven or something like that. He's like, oh, sack him. You take fourteen for two damage, for two for two mana cost. Huge. And I only run two of those in there. This is the complete deck list that I have. You can mess with it as much as you want. I have four Mox Opals in there. You say it's a legendary artifact. Why do you have four? Because you can still play them. It will destroy one that's in play, but uh, it will destroy the one that's in play, but it's still a spell you can play. So say you like you have like two in your hand, opening hand, and you know you really want to get the Arreo combo off. There's a lot of like Memnite and Ornithopter and stuff like that and Frogmite that you can get out like on turn one. So, so let's say you get a bunch of artifacts off. You have the stuff to put a bunch of artifacts in, but a mox pull, two a mox opals going. That's enough. You know, you float the man out for the Rayo. It's a one one. Uh, then it turns into the enchant, a legendary enchantment, and then boom. Next turn you play cranial plating, attach that, 
and he can't counter it because his first ability gets countered. So he needs to have two counters plus the mana to play two counters. It's crazy. Test the deck out. If you like it, let me know. Um, it did get, I think, fourth place in the Pro Tour Philadelphia for Modern, and uh, it's not this exact version. The, the other version ha was more concentrated towards Flame, which is also a good version, too. There's another version that's concentrated be between Ray Arreo, and then there's my version that concentrates both Arreo and Flame. So, give it a try if you like it. I mean, it's been dominating. I haven't lost a game with it in probably 12 matches. So... It's huge. It's a good deck. I'm going to go over right now just how powerful it is. My opponent kind of gets a little mana screwed, but you can see just the power of this deck that it takes total advantage of your opponent, uh, especially at his, at his weakest times. So take a look at this, and it's coming up right now. Hey guys, here we go. Welcome back. And uh, this is the uh, video. I, I did this video a little while ago. This is the Affinity deck. Um can't remember exactly what kind of decks this guy plays. I think he plays some kind of like ramp deck or something like that. You can see my opening hand there. I got Thought Cast, Vault Scourge, Memnite, Frogmite, Spell, uh, Spell, Skype. <laughs> Those all rhyme. <laughs> Flame, Cranial Planing. Uh, as you can see, I have zero land here, and I go ahead and Mulligan. He had a Dark Seal Sinidal. Plus, I got a Frogmite there. This is a slow hand. Now you're gonna say that I you're gonna see that I win pretty quickly, but this is a slow hand. And, uh, there we go. So, let's go ahead and see uh, what everything is. I want to apologize for this video being so long. It's probably going to be about 14 minutes, too. Uh, it's just, you know, I want to put in these matches, and I want to be really detailed about everything that I talk about so that people out there, they see this, and they go, oh, wow, that's, you know, that's pretty good, and all that stuff. And, you know, so here we go, and uh, let's see, uh, I believe I get to go first, or he gets to go first. So that gives him kind of an advantage here that he gets to go first. But because this deck, you know, wants to go first usually, so you can win really quickly. Here we go. He goes first, plays a mountain, and then he taps that mountain and plays. Oh, yeah, this is a goblin deck. That's right. This is a fast deck, and I just like annihilate him. Goblin bushwhacker. It's a one-one. If you pay the kicker, then, you know, it gets better, but it's all right. I played Dark Seal Cynodil, and I don't think I have anything else this turn. I could have played Inkbox Nexus first, but I'm trying to get artifacts out there as quick as possible. And, uh, he's saying that I'm playing some kind of land destruction deck or something like that. And he, he or Affinity, he really doesn't even know what I'm playing, so... Alright, and he's going to attack now, and he hit me, I take one, and now he's going to play Goblin Grenade, and I'm like, wow, this is ridiculous, I'm taking a lot of damage already. Boom, 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 and take five damage, six damage total that turn, went down to 14, and you know, Goblin decks are fast, and you know, he's going pretty quick on me here, but here we go. So now next, I'm going to play my Steam Volts. And just to get some more land out there. Because um, I want to be able to play like Thought Cast or Flame pretty soon. So I'm trying to get some color out there. Go ahead and play the uh, Springleaf Drum. Just to kind of get some stuff going out there. And I don't think I have anything else for this turn. So I'm going to pass it. All right, goes over to him. Now, apparently, he didn't draw the land that he wanted to. A uh, type of deck like his only needs two or three land to really just smash you. Um, but even then, it could it could still smash you with just one land. So, anyways, he's seems a little frustrated. He passed the turn. I wasn't aware that his turn was over that quickly. <laughs> wasn't really paying attention. I figured it out. Okay, now it's my turn. Draw. Okay, now I can play Make Mock Nexus. Now I have two artifacts in play right now. And my goal here is to try and get Frogmite into play. Try and get some stuff going. There we go. I'm going to pay the two life for the Vault Scourge. So I have three artifacts in play now. And then tap one, two right here. Put Frogmite into play. And now I can even play Thoughtcast. So 
that's pretty huge because now I can draw two cards, which is a huge advantage for me. Um, now he just figured out that I'm playing Affinity. But, whatever. And here we go. And I think I, do I draw two cards? Yeah, I thought cast for one mana to cut, draw two cards. There we go. Two cards. Draw my Clarineal Plating, which is going to be huge because you see how I have Flane in my hand. So there's a combo right there. Plus, I have a Galvanic Blast. Literally, I can win next turn. That's how ridiculous this is. I can win turn four. But let's see what he does here. I don't remember. I think he has a removal or something like that. Kind of screws me over. Um, once I get Spell Sky into play, everything will be okay. So, there we go. And he had nothing there. I draw. Didn't get a land. I was really hoping for a land there. Um, but it's okay. Got another cr I got another Thought Cast. I'm going to go ahead and play the uh, Cranial Plating. And... Uh, See what uh see what he says there. I'm gonna go ahead and pay three or two to put spell sky into play. I want I wanted to get the spell sky into play right now because yeah he's gonna destroy something here yeah yeah I had a feeling he would do that. It's okay though I saw the frog might and he goes down now. It's all right though. Um, could you respond to the spell sky coming into play? I wanted the spell sky in place so I could protect my cranial plating guy. Um, I pass it over to him. I know that I literally win like next turn, but let's see what he can do. He adds mana to his mana pool and then plays a dismember and deals. Uh, I want to see what target he's going to go on here. On my spell sky, spell sky dies. That's okay. I mean. I'm trying to get people to like not look at, you know, my other creatures that are so important. This guy is just a 1-1 one -one with double strike. Um, it's another goblin. But I think I destroy this goblin here with, uh, or I take two damage from the uh, steam vents. And uh, I think I destroy this goblin right here with uh, Galvanic Blast or something like that. Here we go. I'm going to go ahead and attach the uh, cranial plating onto Frogmite, making him a 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, a 7, 2. Or a 1, 2, 3, 4. No, he, he's a 6, 2. Yeah. It's not too bad right now, but it's going to get better. You know, I thought Cass, see if I can get some more artifacts in play. Draw two cards. Ornithopter turns into a 7 2 now. Then next, um, gonna declare attacks and attack here at the 7 2. He goes ahead and just takes the damage. Um, I was going to respond to blockers and just kill him with the Galvanic Blast. But I wanted to see what he was going to do there. I'm going to go ahead now and fling. Fling it right at him. For 7 damage. Creature's gone. And then I could either right now equip the uh, Ornithopter together or just go ahead and Galvanic Blast for another 4 damage. It's game over. That's it. That's literally all she wrote there, guys. And, uh, you know, I hope you enjoyed that video there. Um, that's just a lot of damage in one turn. And it took him out. So, hope you enjoyed it, guys. And let me know how you like the deck. And if you try it out, too, let me know how you like it. All right. Well, take it easy. And don't forget to uh, subscribe. I could really use the help. I do have like, a decent amount of subscribers so far. But, you know, I want to really get recognized out there, and I am going to give tips and tricks for both limited and constructed so that we can both make it together to the Pro Tour and, uh, you know, just do really well in the new Planeswalker point system that's out.